The journey that you and I are on is a journey of becoming like Jesus. And we're only going to become like Jesus if we actually understand who he is and are so in love with him that we want to become like him. This isn't an intellectual pursuit. This is a, a, a relational pursuit. And passages like Romans 8, 29 tell us that God's purpose is for us to look like his son. Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he foreknew, God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. We are to be conformed to his image. And uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 18 is another great verse to, to keep in mind. That's the one that says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're supposed to look like Jesus and we become like Jesus as we behold him and study him and study how he showed us who he was so that we can follow. All throughout the Bible, we see passages that show us the character of Jesus and show us the life that he lived as a model for us to follow. One of the passages I want to look at today is found in Hebrews 2 verses 10 to 12. And this is a beautiful little window into an aspect of Jesus that you might not have seen before. It says, For it was fitting for him, God, for whom are all things and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So this is the Lord, this is God talking about Jesus made perfect through sufferings. Verse 11, for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. That's you and me. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He's made us all one. This is such a beautiful aspect to the family of God that he's made us brothers and sisters with him. And here's verse 12. And that the writer of Hebrews is quoting from Psalm 22, Jesus speaking to the Lord. And it says, I will declare, Jesus says, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Now, this is a very interesting passage. It's, the, it's Jesus speaking to his father, and he says that I will declare my father's name in the midst of the assembly of my brothers and sisters. This is the church. Jesus says, I will sing praise to my father. This is a mind-bending thought that Jesus sings praise to the Father. He is a worshiper. But not only that, he's also the one being worshipped in heaven. Let your mind just wrestle with that thought for a minute. He's both the one being worshipped and he is a worshiper. It's important to let our minds wrestle with some of these beautiful and somewhat hard to understand mysteries that Jesus is both the priest that offers the sacrifice to his father and he's also the sacrifice that he is the shepherd that leads us through the gate into his safe pastures and he's also the gate the scripture is so full of these almost opposite things I think one of the the easiest ways to understand some of these opposing ideas is just to see how Jesus is everything. He's everything. It says he is in all and through all and for all. All things that have been made were made by him, through him, for him, and nothing that was made was made without him. Like, he, he's everything. 
He is the Son of God. The one from before all time began. The exalted King of Kings. You read in Revelation, like the scenes that John sees of all of heaven falling down to worship the, the worthy one, the, the lamb who was slain. So that Jesus, the same one, he says here, I will declare your name, my father's name, to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Jesus identifies with us in every way. And so I encourage each one of us to look at passages like this and see both the high honor and the humility of being a worshiper, that Jesus actually became one. He worshiped. He sang praise to his father and by so doing showed us the way that we can follow, that we can be worshipers just as he was. Not only was he on the earth 2000 years ago and, and literally doing this, but the scriptures say that he is the same yesterday, today and forever and that he will forever be the firstborn among many brethren. He's, he's forever one of us, what a savior. And that he's forever in our assembly amongst his brothers and sisters, worshiping his father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being a worshiper. And just like you showed us, the honor and the humility to become a worshiper of your father. So we, so we want to follow after you and say, we will, we will sing praise to our father. And this is the beautiful thing of the cross. His father became our father, that he's the firstborn of many brethren, it says. So today I just encourage you to be hungry, to find Jesus in the scriptures, to find the man and to see the life that he lived and invites us to live just as he lived, to become transformed into his image, conform to the image of the son. And just as we saw in this passage, Hebrews 2, to be a worshiper. Jesus dignified the role of a worshiper to sing praises to his father. He didn't consider it beneath him as the one worthy of worship to not also become like us and to worship his father. Holy Spirit, thank you for revealing Jesus to us through the word. Jesus, thank you for being the word of God. Thank you that we can know you, find you, and become like you as we read your written word, the word of God. Show us how to become like you. Help us to live lives of worship to our Father, just as you showed us here. We welcome you into, our, into the midst of our assemblies, of our gatherings. We anticipate your presence among your brothers and sisters, worshiping your Father, not just your Father, but our Father too. Thank you, Jesus.